Yeah, man, it's going down. It's Donnie Houston Podcast. I am Donnie Houston. Check it out, man. We got a real special guest, man. I'm talking about legend, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about, uh, man, the first time I saw this guy, man, he was on the show called American Gangster. You know what I mean? That BET was doing. I was just like, man, who is this guy, man? Rick Ross. Like, oh, the rapper is paying homage to this guy, Rick Ross. Okay, dude. Oh, he the first one had, okay, bet. You know what I'm saying? And now he's in the H, man. You know what I'm saying? Put it down, man. What's going down, man? <laughs> man, you know, down in the H, loving it. Yeah. Getting ready. Um, we here at a, a Lucky Leaf um, CBD uh, convention, uh, preparation for marijuana. You know what I'm saying? That's what it really is for y'all who don't know. Because it should have been a lot more people at the uh, convention yesterday. I, I really was amazed. Uh, but everybody always wait too late. You know, they wait until all the licenses are gone and then they want to get them. You know, them licenses right now in L.A., a marijuana license for a dispensary is selling for like $6 million for the worst ones. Hmm. And you're talking about when you get a good spot, you're talking about maybe $20 million. So those licenses are valuable, and uh, people slipping on them. Wasn't enough people there yesterday. I probably could count on my hand the blacks that was there, probably like 10, maybe 15. Oh, shit. <clears throat> how, 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 uh, how many other places do you go, you know what I'm saying, kind of doing this thing? I go all around the country. I'm going to New Jersey. When I leave here, I'm doing a convention in, in New Jersey. Um, tomorrow and uh, Monday, and then I'll be going to uh, Minnesota. Uh, Tuesday. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm in this. I'm in it. Yeah. Man, tell me, like, is it a trip for you to, like, you know what I'm saying, come home and then, like, be like, man, this thing that was, like, illegal, like, now nah, we, we can do oh, this. Yeah, and it's yeah, all it, it totally you know baffles me. And, and, and not only that, but they still got people in prison for it. Yeah. You know, like, people out here selling weed legally and you still got people in prison for, 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 for weed. Like, come on, y'all. Something wrong. You know, we, 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 we fucking up. Yeah, yeah, for real, for real, for real. Yeah, for real, man. So, man, just tell me, uh, we, did you ever sell weed back in the day? Or we just, a little bit, a, a little, little bit. bit. I, I smoked more than I sold. No you, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and this is like around what age and all this when you're doing this? Well, I, I, I started in, in cocaine when I was 19, and I probably started smoking weed probably about about two years after I was in the game. You know, once you start getting money, you, you, you feel like you can you can burn it up. Hmm. You can blow a little mm -hmm. bit, yeah, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Man, okay, so 19, but, okay, how you even just get into that, though? Because, I mean, like, I guess maybe the times was different, you know what I'm saying? But most people, you graduate, you be like, okay, I'm doing weed, you know what I'm saying? Then I get introduced to cocaine. I went weed. straight to cocaine, yeah. man. That's why I kind of, you know, when I hear him say weed was a, was a uh, gateway. gateway drug, you know, it kind of baffled me because I started the opposite way. I started with the hard drug and then worked my way down to the weed. Well, you know, I was so poor, though, I couldn't afford I couldn't afford weed and, uh, or nothing else, you know what hmm. I'm saying? Uh, so <clears throat> it, it just, I don't know, it kind of just, 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 just fell on me, you know. Malcolm X said, "I didn't fall on Planet Rock. Planet right, Rock fell right. on me." So <laughs> that's kind of how I got started in the cocaine. Um, if somebody would have told me a couple of days before I got started that I was going to be a cocaine dealer, I would have been like, "You out of your mind?" You know, I didn't have a clue because I was really clueless about about drugs. That quick it switched <clears throat> for you? Yeah, it was like. One day, my boy called me. I'm sitting on the porch, and, and uh, I'm lost. I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, my life is, like, at a standstill. And uh, he called me. He was like, man, come over. I got something new, and, and, and you're going to love it. And I was like, what? And I jumped in the car, and I went over, and uh, he laid some cocaine out on the table for me. Hmm. And that's how it started. <coughs> that simple. You know, because people ask me all the time, like, when they meet me, you know, they like, man, I can't, oh, excuse me, I can't believe that, 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 you, that you was the guy that everybody say you used to be and da, da, da. And I was like, well, I was the same guy. The only thing I did is I just took cocaine out of my game. Hmm. You know, I'm the same person. Uh, I still think the same way. I act the same way. I talk the same way. Uh, 
I just don't sell cocaine no more. That's the only difference with me. And so I, I never was <coughs> what some people consider a bad person. You know, uh, uh, I always like to treat everybody the way I want to be treated. You know, I'm not going to do nothing to you that I don't want you to do to me. Hmm. And um, it's the way I always been. Yeah, yeah. So how do you, I mean, you start, you start getting into cocaine, you know what I'm saying? You're 19, like, how fast does it start, like, turning into a thing where you're like, you know what? Man, I got beat out of my it. first 50. No shit. Yeah, yeah, I got beat out of my first 50, man. I almost quit, man. Hmm. I almost quit. I, um, one, one of the OGs, the big homies, you know, because uh, I didn't know what it was, and I didn't even believe even though my my, 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 my my homie who put, he was my big homie too, who put me on it. Um, did he did he seek you out because he was like, he know you needed bread and all that? Or that's my boy, it's, it's you just know your what I'm boy. saying? He it's, like, it's, oh, he on, so let me put my boy on. It's my yeah. boy, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, um, he, he painted cars, you know, so I would go over and help him sand the cars. And you know, mm. it's like my, my I want to know how to paint cars, right? Mm. That, that's really what I'm trying to get at, right? I'm like, uh, I want to learn how to paint cars. I want to learn how to pull dents out, and you know the whole nine yards. So that's really why I'm really hanging with him. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? And um, he wasn't doing nothing to, 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 to get you in trouble. You know what I'm saying? So, so I felt that hanging out with him would 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 um, would get me on the right track. But then he got a scholarship for football, hmm. and so he go to college. And then while he's at college playing football. Um, he was a backup running back for for the dude. I think a dude might have won the Heisman that year. He was contending for the Heisman, the guy that was in front of him. So, you know, they they getting all the perks. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And uh, when he come back, he came back home with, with cocaine. And uh, it was on after that, man. Mm. But uh, the first one he gave me, <clears throat> uh, my, my big homie Martin, because I was going around to everybody asking him, was it really cocaine? You know, like. Man, this dude ain't really got no cocaine. You know, we done saw cocaine on TV, but we ain't never saw cocaine <laughs> in real life. Like, man, ain't no way he got no cocaine. And then what he was telling me, uh, it was about big as a match here, and he was telling me that was worth 50 bucks. And I was like, man, that dude can't be right. Mm. You know, I mean, he ain't never lied to me that I know of, but he this can't just be. Don't seem it like, just yeah. don't seem logical <laughs> to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If what he's telling me, I'm getting ready to be rich. So I go to Martin and then uh, <clears throat> Martin take it, he cook it up and he say, oh, it look like cocaine, but I got to sample it and it's only big as a match head. So he you say it. cook it up at that time, crack wasn't around though. Yeah, well, they was cooking it in. Hmm. It, they didn't call it, they didn't call it crack, they call it ready rock. Hmm. So. <clears throat> but same, same, same formula though. Same formula, hmm. same formula. Um, <clears throat> Man, no, at that time, they wasn't calling it Ready Rock. They was calling it Free Base. Mm. So um, he cooked it up. I never saw it before. I never saw him cook it up before. I never saw none of that. All of this is like. You get all this shit in one time. Like, this is my first time out the game, but this, this is what I get. Mind boggling. <laughs> you talking about a guy who, who failed science, and now I'm seeing a, a motherfucker do science. You know what I'm saying? He makes some baking soda, water, and got a scale. And I'm like, what the hell? This might be over my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so then he, he took a little piece off and sampled it, and he was like, man, it, it tastes good, but I need a bigger piece. So he took another piece, and I, I'm looking at it, and it's disappearing. Mm, man, you see smoking here. <laughs> and then he said, man, you know what? Just I'm going to just smoke all this and, and come by Friday, and I got you. I'm like, oh man. So, uh, and then my boy is with me. You know, I, I got, I got my homie Al with me, and, and he hot. He, he, he want, he ready to do something to Martin. You know, what I'm saying? Martin then smoked up the whole rock. We fifty dollars in the bread. <laughs> so, uh, that was my first experience, man. So we, we left his house, you know, with our head down. You know, we had failed. Hmm. <laughs> so, but I mean, usually, but this is your boy though, so he ain't really tripping on, you know, giving you another shot at it or like, how do you, you know, end up like? Well, um, so we sitting on the porch again. I'm back at mom's house sitting on the porch, you know, trying to figure it out. What's my next move? You know, the cocaine didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, here come Martin, put up in the Cadillac. 
he jumped out the car, throw his hands up, what's up? And uh, this was my first time meeting Big Mouse, uh, and he had Big Mouse with him. Both of them was pimps. You know, they was Figaro pimps, though. Hmm. You know, they get money every now and then and smoke it up in cocaine. <laughs> I didn't understand it at that time, you know, how I was working, but uh, that that's really that's how, really what was going on. What was going on with them, why they really didn't have no money, you know, because he should have had money right then. But that was my uh, that was my first sale. You know, Big Mouse bought a hundred dollars worth. He called, I called Mike and I told Mike what happened. You know, straight up with him the whole time. Like, look, man, I got beat out that fifty. My boy said he gonna pay me Friday though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, they want to get a hundred dollars worth. And so my boy shot over there, gave him the hundred. They did the transaction. And so I just start middlemaning then. You know, every time they call me, I call him because he he didn't really, you know, he was playing big wig already. He had a track, mm. and he was a big wig already. I don't want nobody. I don't talk to nobody. I don't want to meet nobody. You, know, you get the money. You you do the transaction. That type of situation. And uh, I guess I did that for about three or four weeks. And uh, so I built up my clientele. Mm. And then I started seeing myself make $100 a day, $200 a day, $300 a day. And then I started scratching my head like, why are you doing this for this dude? You ought to be doing this for yourself. And uh, <clears throat> my boy Al had went to jail. So when he got out, I was, I, was, I was out on bail too. I was out on bail. I had seven counts of grand theft auto. Hmm. Um, the, the oh, you still messing with You still trying to fuck with them cars. No, I quit messing with cars then. I, I was, I was scared. <laughs> Cause each, 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 each grand, each, each grand theft carried three years. Damn. So I, I was potentially looking at like twenty-one years in prison. Um, not saying I was gonna get that, but you know that's was the max. So, so I was scared to touch a car. I didn't really want to do cars no more. Uh, I wanted to find me another hustle. So. Uh, Al was in jail for burglary, and uh, when he finally got out, I told him what I'd been doing, and um, he said, uh, "Let's go steal a car." He said, "If you start it, I'll do everything else, because I learned how to start the cars." And um, so we went and knocked our first car and made two fifty, and bought an eight track, and never looked back. Hmm. Damn. Okay, so how at what point are you like, man? Like when you get your first uh, like million? How long does it take you to get your first million? I don't even know. I stopped counting money. You know, I just it was just like it, because at this time, what year is this? This is like what, like eighty four or five up in there? Eighty two ish, eighty one. That early. But we making so much money. You know, you you talking about people who 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 couldn't buy pizza. You know, we used to have to go half on a pizza. That's how broke we was. We couldn't put gas might have been like 75 cent a gallon and we couldn't buy gas. We used to have to go steal gas to put in our car. Damn. So so we, we were broke. I'm talking about we was past broke. We was. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you needed to borrow something to be broke, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so <laughs> so now you're talking about broke. guys who went from being broke to making $5,000 a day. Damn. Had you, had you already met, what's the guy? Uh, uh, no, 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 that was later. That was later. <clears throat> so much stuff happened in between that, though, you know. Um, like I said, we, we go from 200 a day to 5,000 a day, 10,000 a day, 20,000 a day, 30,000 a day, 100,000 dollars every day. How are you how are you amassing so much money so quickly? Is it that people just really just own this drug like this or are you just really just like building clientele and Both. you know what I'm saying, getting connection Both. and all this? You know, uh, it's it's something about business and and I found out this is a trait that 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 um I kind of mastered is when people like you, they help you. Hmm. You know, when people don't like you, they won't do nothing for you. So it's it's better to have people like you. So, you know, people like me. You know, I I, I didn't <clears throat> I never try to belittle my, my people. You know, I never like 
even with all my friends, when when they didn't have no money before they started selling drugs, I always still treated them the same way. You know, it wasn't like, hey, go to the store, do this. You know, it was never like that. It was like, I just got money. We still the same way. We still just the homies. You know, we just kick it. Hmm. You know, so it, it when you, and when you do that, they don't mind boosting you. You know what I'm saying? They don't mind just just doing favors for you. You know, and, and when you get money, people do more favors for you. You know, when, once you start having some bread, especially that you that you that you spread around. And I, I spread my money around. You know, I, I didn't take my money and spend it on myself. You know? Cause you weren't you weren't like a flashy dude. You still you was just no. I didn't even have a car. I was making five thousand dollars a day and didn't even have a car. So how you moving around? Just like come. I mean, I had. I'm talking about like a, a car that you drive yeah. around. I had buckets. You know, cars I paid a hundred dollars for, uh, three hundred dollars. You know, I had cars like that there. But I'm talking about like I didn't go in like my lowrider. I had. I was building a lowrider when I was still in cars. I was building this convertible 66 Chevy, mm. and I was chrome the bottom out. And, and you know, when I was sitting in, in the jail cell, when they arrested me, I was like, damn, boy, you've been doing all this shit for a damn car. Mm. All the time that you've been spending, you've been spending on a car. Wasting your life on a car. So when, uh, when I started selling cocaine and, and I saw myself getting ready to be successful, I took that car and I squashed it took it to the junkyard and, no, and had him squash it with that uh it was crazy you know that i did that that car probably would be worth 30 40 thousand dollars right now but uh i understand what i was doing is i was squashing that mentality hmm. you know that mentality materialistic yeah to want to show everybody what you're doing and want hmm. everybody to see you uh i, I didn't i didn't want that no more hmm. You know, what I wanted now is I wanted to be successful. You know, I wanted a business. Um, I wanted to be able to create opportunity for others. And uh, that's what I started doing. Are the police on you at any time while you get this money? Police didn't get on us, too. I think the police, first time they raided one of my houses might have been like 84, 85. Damn. And You're talking was, about like three, four, five years where you just... Escape. Yeah, yeah, no no police contact at all. And even when they got on us, they was on us wrong because they raided my, my girlfriend's house. You know, they didn't raid the dope houses. Mm. They raided my girlfriend's house. So, uh, and that kind of baffled us too, like who would put them on us, you know, because they 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 didn't really have the right information. You know, they was raiding places that, that I would never take dope. Mm. Like, I don't take no dope over her house, you know what I'm saying? Like, what I need dope there for? Ain't nobody buying no dope there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and with me, I only I only touch dope when somebody was buying it. You know, like, you know, I hear people ride around with dope in their cars and be like, what? No, 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 no. When I pick it up, it's going to a specific location and it's to straight line, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, when they got on us, I was a little baffled because they was lost. Hmm. So that's pretty much how that went. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when you um, man, okay, lost eighty four. Man, I just lost my train of thought. We're gonna take a pause real quick. It's all good. Take your time. I was like getting ready to ask you about. Oh yeah, that's what I was gonna say. So take me through like a um, like a regular day for you. You know what I'm saying? Like at that time, what was your days looking like? Cause you ain't you're not hand to hand with shit. You know what I'm saying? And you just kind of stand low key. Like what are you like? What are you really doing? You know what I mean? Like day for day and shit. Playing basketball. <laughs> yeah, I I used to love basketball. I fell in love with basketball. Um, so most of the time I'd be at the gym shooting hoop, you know, uh, taking jump shots. Uh, but I did, we you know, I did a lot of other stuff though. You know, I had, I had a race bike, uh, I had a drag car, so I would do that some weekends. Uh, we had dirt bikes. I would go dirt bike riding sometimes, messing with girls. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, you know, we was we we would chase women. You know. Um, 
it was, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty much that was it. You know, most of the day, though, would be still would be centered around the drug business. You know, people coming in from out of town, uh, organizing, you know. How, how far are you reaching at this time? What year? Uh, like, I'd say around 84, 85 up in that time. Well, I would say when you first start, how, how do you even first start branching out outside of, like, California, outside of? Well, people start coming. First, it was just like, when I first started, it was just like in the neighborhood. You know, a few pimps, uh, a few of their prostitutes would come. Uh, but they started adding people, you know. Like, I, I used to have a reward system, you know. Like, if you bring me somebody, give you a little extra. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? For, for, for doing that, so they would bring people to me to get that when mm. they didn't have no money, you know, and, and, uh, <clears throat> it started growing. So then it was LA, then Long Beach got involved. Then Pasadena got involved Then Riverside. And, you know, it just kept like expanding, mm. you know, uh, uh, to next thing you know, Cincinnati, St. Louis, Oklahoma, you know, uh, we all over the place, Denver, Seattle, Washington, um, it just it just kept growing, you know, and then next thing, um, the, the 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 younger dudes in the hood started getting involved, you know, the gangbangers and 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 because uh, what I did when when I first started, most of the people that I sold to was like thirty some years old, hmm. um, but I opened up the door for a younger generation for the guys under me. My crew was all mostly younger than I was. You know, I had guys like uh, little Tommy, who was only, I think Tommy was like 15, 14 years old when uh, when he first started. Mm. Um, so I started allowing these younger guys to get in the game because that's who I hung with. You know, those were my crew. Man, and so what? where does the freeway thing come from? And that's when, when we was low riding. Um, I stayed right by the freeway, and we used to strip cars right on the side of the freeway, hmm. you know, in the broad open. But oh, it, was shit. A, it was a one way. Yeah, you know, it wasn't a, the, the traffic was on the freeway. So, but this know, is before you get into hustling and all that, though. Yeah, this is before I started selling cocaine. No, shit. And so uh, it was this guy named Jay Clayton, and at the street races, he was like a legend. You know, he was like the man, and. Uh, when our dudes was boning his wife and he knew it you know young dudes we yeah, younger than yeah. he was he was he was probably about four or five years older than us so you know young dude boning his wife and, and he knew about it so he took offense to us you know and uh, every time we would come to the street races he'd be talking about our cars look at the, the, the raggedy ass freeway boys <laughs> and you know our cars was raggedy too <laughs> my car had at that time, my car had a blue door, a white hood, mm. you know, primer on it. You know, I was, I was, I was just getting started. You know what I'm saying? Um, even the street races is really how I, I, I even got started selling cocaine. You know, because um, it went from the first time I went to the street because uh, you know I was playing tennis, and then after uh, it was discovered that I couldn't read or write. Then uh, I, I found out I wasn't gonna be going to college, hmm. so I started hanging with the homies, and the homies was going to the street races and 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 hanging out, you know, up there. And so I started going with them, and and I saw them cars. I was like, oh my goodness, I want one of them, hmm. you know. Uh, they had some of the prettiest girls and you'd ever seen riding in the passenger seats, and I'm like, man, I got to get me one of them. So. I started going around asking all the dudes, you know, how you get that car? What you do to get that car? And uh, I hooked up with this cat named Dirty Benny. And uh, he told me to come by his house. And they started me off just driving. I started off just as a driver. You know, I would just drive the cars. They start them up. And I would drive back to L.A. They give me 50 bucks. Hmm. So uh, from doing that, I was able to buy my first car, 100 bucks. I bought my first, my 66 Chevy for $100, yeah. Hundred dollars. They had no motor, no transmission. <laughs> <laughs> the top was gone. Yeah. But uh, you know, you steal cars. You don't really care about none of that stuff because yeah. you can go get one that looks just like it and put all the stuff on it. So uh, 
that's how I got started. So once I started doing the cars, then that's how I hooked up with Mike, who eventually introduced me to cocaine because I wanted him to paint my car. Mm. <laughs> Damn. I mean, they're all kind of like, all of this goes. It all goes in in in, in cycles, and um, it it just you know just keep climbing, and then uh, I went from Mike introducing me to the cocaine to me knowing everybody in the city that was selling cocaine, mm. and then you become. I mean, how do you become like the the number one guy though? Uh, you know, I, I grind. I, 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 I'm from you know I'm from Texas, so uh, I grew up in 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 L. A. But every summer, my mom would bring us back to East Texas, Tyler, mm-hmm. and uh, I would work with my uncles. And my uncles was they were slave drivers. You know, <laughs> 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 they worked from sun up to sun down. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we used, to, we used to laugh at one of my uncles in T, and, and we say, boy, that boy make that saw holler. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be done work that saw so bad, the saw started screaming and hollering. Mm. You know, give me a break. <laughs> mm. So uh, I, I guess I took that work ethic, and 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 uh, I added it to, to dope, along with my tennis lessons, you know, uh, because- How does a tennis of, lesson apply to that? Well, you know, in, in tennis, you you have a thing that uh, we have a saying that you want to get every ball. Hmm. You want to get every ball. So when I started hustling, I wanted to get every sale. Hmm. You know, I didn't want to miss no sales. And and you know, you take all those lessons and just combine them, and and then you 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 create somebody like myself. That's crazy. So. The laws when the laws get on y'all, you know what I mean? Because you ended up going in the first time. When did you don't meet the guy uh, before you go in, right? Yeah, I knew him before I went in. So how does that even? How does that relationship even like take place? Well, uh, my 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 first contact with the with the with the Nicaraguans was a guy named Ivan. Uh, Ivan had got shot. His wife shot him in the back, caught him cheating, and uh, shot him in the back and paralyzed him. So. Uh, <clears throat> he he never he never really regained his his strength his dominance so uh, he had his brother in law doing the business for him and his brother in law was was scary as hell hmm. you know he liked the money but he didn't really want to do no work so uh, one day his brother in law came to me and he was like uh, he they he was from his brother in law was from Honduras and he, he had broken English so. He was like, man, I, I want out. I want out of this business. <laughs> and I was like, what? You want out? <laughs> Fuck, <are> you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. You, my brother, right. you know what I'm saying? You getting this easy money, you ain't doing nothing. All you do is bring it down here to me to South Central and, and, and you pay. And he was like, but I got, I got, I got, a, I got a, a favor for you. So we, we, cut, the, we cut the deal. Um, he was going to sell the connect to me. Hmm. At this time, how much money are you seeing? I don't know. I'm seeing a lot of money. I'm probably seeing 500, 700,000 every day. Okay. All right. I'm listening to you. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, I think we gave him 150,000 for the connect hmm. to introduce us. But you know, I made that money back the same day. Right, right. So we did that deal. That money came right back. So uh, he introduced me to, to Danilo. You know, and and what that did is took his cut out. You know what I'm saying? And Danilo gave me a little more because now I could spend more money. So uh, I, I got a discount that was uh, ridiculous. Hmm. So then, so how do you end up uh, getting uh, getting locked up in between this uh, for the first time? Well, they they created this task force. Um, <clears throat> they called itself the Freeway Rick Task Force. Was this the beginning of them going into your girl's crib? Yeah, that was the Freeway Rick Task Force, but we didn't know who they were. Hmm. You know, all we knew was narcotics. It came in, but we didn't know that name themselves after me. How long how long ago is this after you meet the Connect? After you get the new Connect? I don't know. <laughs> it's just, it's 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 uh it's close to about the same time. It might be a little after, or maybe a little. Before. I, I don't. I can't really remember 
exactly the timing that it was. Because it, when they when they raided the first time, that it, it really didn't do nothing, you know. Okay. Like it didn't disrupt nothing. Uh, it wasn't a big deal. It was just like, okay, this is a. They raided the house, you know. They planted some drugs, mm. you know, because uh, uh, they took my girl to jail. Oh, they, man. they took her to jail, mm. and. Um, that was the first time I knew that they was playing drugs. Now that, now that was something, you know, to know. Now, damn, you got narcotic agents that's playing drugs. So um, when when we found out they were playing drugs, that was a little alarming. I mean, you know, because when I was committing crime, you know, I know that I may get caught. I may have to go to jail. But I don't want to go to jail for something I didn't do. Mm -hmm. Put me in jail if you catch me wrong, you know. But don't don't put me in jail for something I didn't do. I ain't gonna go for that. Yeah. I, I'm gonna fight if you put me in jail when I was wrong. Right, right. But I'm really gonna fight if you put me in jail for some shit I didn't do. And uh, <clears throat> and that's what they were doing. You know, mm. they was for fabricating search warrants. Uh, beating you up, you know, they let the dog bite me while I was handcuffed, um, hit me in the head with flashlights, let the dog bite me. I mean, they they was cold. These were some cold dudes. So um, I go to jail. I wind up going to jail. Uh, they don't send me to jail, but what they do is they take all their information and they give it to the feds. Mm. So um, when the feds arrest me, my lawyer and I had, because when I tell my lawyer, right, I tell my lawyer that uh, these cops are crooked. I'm like, man, these cops are crooked. They lying. They playing drugs. They torturing people. So my lawyer, he don't believe me. Oh, no, cops don't do that. You know, white guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, typical, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, cops don't do that. They, they, you're crazy. I'm saying, man, I'm telling you. So he tells me. If that's the case, you should hire a private investigator. And I was like, damn, good idea. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so I hired a private investigator. And uh, I hired this guy named Frenchie, and uh, he started following the cops around. Mm. Everywhere they went, he went. You know, um, he was taking pictures, doing interviews. You know, when they arrest the people, he'd go to jail, interview them. And, uh, ask him how much money did you have? Oh, I, I really had a hundred thousand, and they only turned in ten thousand. And that cocaine wasn't mine. I didn't have any cocaine at the house. I only had money. Yeah. So um, he compiled all of this information, and uh, when they indicted me, we hand him all the information he had had. So uh, it kind of knocked their case down a little bit. You know, they wasn't so uh, uh, assured their case, and then they eventually indicted the cops. Mm. The, the feds eventually indicted the cops, and uh, um, that's that's one of the reasons the rapper called me a snitch is because I got the cops indicted, uh, and I also testified against them as well. You know, I went to court and told them that uh, the night that they shot at me, no, I didn't have no gun, uh, I was unarmed, uh, wasn't no dope in the car. Um, <clears throat> when they raided my house, my girlfriend's house, we had never had drugs at that house ever. You know, uh, stuff like that there. And uh, that's not, that's what happened with that case. So they made me a sweetheart deal um, that if I played guilty to five years, they well, I played guilty to 10, and they agreed that if I testified against the cops that they would knock it down to five. Hmm. And uh, they did. Yeah. And so you go in, but then you, you, you come out, you know what I mean, and... Then that's when that's when my boy Danilo set me up, my ex boy, <laughs> my supplier. Hmm. He also was my informant. Hmm. Yeah, he uh he he started calling me as soon as I got home. Uh, you you didn't feel like nothing was was you know what I'm saying? Well, this my boy, you know, like fuck, I'm, you know, I stayed at his house and stuff, you know. You know my mama, you know I know his all his family, you know, it's like. And he knew I was just getting out of jail. Hmm. Like, you gonna set a motherfucker up that's just getting out of jail and ain't even doing nothing? You know, I, I was I was more shocked with the cops. 
allowing him to, uh, and I don't know why I was shocked, but, um, and, and the cops were mad at me. You know, I just had a documentary come out that came out after Monday Night Football. Mm. You know, it, it it aired all week on on uh, Oprah Winfrey show. They were showing the commercials of me, and and so it's all over the place. And the L.A. Times do a big story on me uh, that I was home, and they were saying stuff like, um, if there was an eye to the to the crack game, you know. I was I was the eye, hmm. you know, like the center of the hurricane. <laughs> I was the center. Um, <clears throat> so I imagine these cops saw all this stuff and, you know, saw what I did to their Target, partners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so they, they, they sicked him on me. Matter of fact, when we, when we went to court, we found out that my dude wasn't even supposed to be out of jail. He's supposed to still been in jail. And they allowed him to leave jail just to set me up. And they also forged the green card because uh, I got him kicked out the country too. You know, I don't play with him. When they, when you fuck with me, we gonna we gonna go to war. So I, I'm the one got him kicked out the country. I found out that a convicted felon who is not a, a, a citizen of the United States must be deported. Mm. And uh, so I'm going through the law, law library and I'm reading the books and I found like, oh no, this mother came in the country. Uh, this was after my trial, though. They had already let him testify. And I tried to get a reversal on the strength that he wasn't even supposed to be testifying in, in a federal... You know, he wasn't even supposed to be on, on United States soil at all. Hmm. And uh, I, I was just baffled that the courts um, said that it wasn't important that the jury knew that he wasn't supposed to be in, in the country. I thought that if a jury knew that he wasn't even supposed to be in, in the country, because my, my 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 jury stayed out about it a day and a half, you know they thought about they thought about it, you know, uh, and when we polled the juries, a couple of them said that 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 they thought about letting me go, uh, but my boy was went to trial with me, the one who introduced me to cocaine, he went to trial with me too, uh, but he had a great case because he never talked to the cops, he never did nothing. Um, when they gave me the keys to the drugs, I threw the keys to him and told him to drive the car. So uh, they snatched him out the car, but you know when we went to trial, uh, I lied for him. I lied on the witness stand for him and told him that uh, that he didn't know it was drugs in the car hmm. because I didn't think I was ever getting out of prison anyway. You know like. My my defense was entrapment, you know that the that they targeted me, um, that I was doing a drug deal, you know, and, and one of the most important things on entrapment is is predisposition, which predisposition was totally against me, because I had a prior, you know, I was a prior drug dealer, so that shows predisposition. But uh, when they pulled the jury, uh, one of the things that the jury didn't like. They told they told my lawyer when they pulled him is that I didn't tell my boy that it was drugs in that car. Hmm. So I may have won that case had I not let him off. Damn. Damn. Well, I mean, damn. I and mean, then you ended up going for what twenty? Well, on that case, I wound up doing like fourteen and eight. I stayed out. I only stayed out six months in between my two cases. I was only out six months. So I did another 14 and then... Uh, six months, bro. Yeah, it was like a little vacation. You know what they say, a taste of honey is worse than none. Was, shoo, Were you able to hard. get any money in between that time? No, no, I was I was going square because I, I saw that, that I was doing the music business. I, I had made me a nice little plan. I came up with a plan uh, I found, you know, I found the alcoholics while I was in jail. No oh, shit. Sure. Yeah. I found the alcoholics when I was in jail. So I saw what, what, what happened with death row and, um, I knew I could do the same thing. Did you know Harry O and all of them like back then? Yeah, I knew him. Yeah. It was just another name I just know from like the LA scene from like, you know what I'm saying? That era. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 I know Harry, uh, 
um, I said something on Vlad about him, and, and uh, he didn't like what I said. So we we not talking right now. Hmm. Uh, he's not talking to me. You know, uh, even though I didn't mean to offend him, you know, uh, I thought I was giving him his props, but uh, he's taken on a new course of action with his life, and uh, I just told a little history, and um, which I shouldn't have done. You know, I should have talked to him about it first before I uh, mentioned his name on uh, on anything. But we were sellies. We were sellies for for quite a while hmm. when they started Death Row. Hmm. Yeah, me and him met Suge at the same time. In jail? Mm-hmm. No shit. Yep. How, so, how, do, how do y'all meet at the same time? Were you supposed to be in on that, or you just happened to be around when it was going down? <laughs> we were sellies. Hmm. Me and Harry were sellies. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is a long story. But I, I don't want to talk about him or his, you know, his situation, yeah. because... Uh, it just, you know, it just ain't cool. I ain't gonna do it. Yeah, well, you know, we, cool. we'll leave that. But uh, uh, when I got to the penitentiary, uh, 187 on the undercover cop came out, and uh, I saw it, and I was like, "Damn, that roof finna blow up." Hmm. So I just got on the phone. I start calling everybody. I called King T, and I was like, "T, look, what's up, man? I want to do some music." And then they just start plugging me with all the dudes. It, it, I'm, I'm finna put together a record label now. I'm finna, I'm finna I'm gonna burn the record business up. Hmm. <laughs> At that time when you went in, you st did you still have like, you still had like your money and shit? Or I had like a little that? money. A little bit? I still had a little money. Right. I had property, but... but uh, What is a little money to you at that time? I think when I went in, I might have had like 800,000 cash on the streets. Hmm. Yeah, something like that. Hmm. That's all right. But it went fast. <laughs> Trying phone to fight bills. to get out of there or just, or just keeping everything Paying going? lawyers, phone bills. You know, my phone bills used to be. Because they put me in jail. Uh, I was in jail in Kentucky, a little, little town called Boone County, hmm. Kentucky. And yeah. I was in solitary confinement. I was in a cell by myself, and I had a telephone 24 hours a day. So I burned that phone up. My phone bills used to be like 8000 a month. Taking mm. care of multiple women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it starts to go fast. Uh, and then people stop taking care of my properties. You know, I start to lose properties. Um, you know, when they put in the paper, you're looking at life sentence. People people just like... Turn their back on you. They start to turn their back on you. You know, you, you really find out who your friends are. Mm. You know, who really, who really care about you. So... That's 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 how it was. But I, I still uh I still had a little money then, you know, and, and I had some I still had some great connections, you know. Um I should've I should have been able to do it better than what I did. Um but a couple of the people that I mess with, you know, like I was saying, like um I used to mess with Otis Smith. He's finally the baker. Mm -hmm. Um I was supposed to be in part on a Beverly Glenn, Beverly Glenn Music. Hmm. That was a label that she was signed to. Bobby Womack was signed to it. Uh, Johnny Taylor. Uh, and with me, I never got the paperwork. You know, I didn't do paperwork on it. I just gave him the money. Uh, I knew Dick Griffey. You know, Dick Griffey is the guy that negotiated the deal for yeah, Death Row. Yeah, Death Row, yeah, Solar Records, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay, you know Dick. Yeah, yeah well, I knew Dick. Uh, so, so I had plugs in the industry. Hmm. You know, I, I had the plugs. As a matter of fact, I knew Jimmy Iovine. Uh, Fade, Devion, um, was the head promoter at, at Interscope. Hmm. Doing the death row, doing the whole rise of, the, of, of Interscope. He was the head promoter there. And um, he's the guy that got the alcoholic signed to Lyle Records. Man. Mm hmm. So when I got out from doing them five years, he took me to Jimmy Iovine kind of like as a payback because Alcoholics was supposed to have been on my label. He was supposed to have been running my label for me. And I went to the whole 
That's what stopped me from getting the alcoholics. I went to the hole. <laughs> so when I got out the hole, Fade had got him signed already. And, you know, me being me, I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to try to stop their deal. You know, I, I ain't no hater. I ain't going to be like, no, nah, y'all can't sign with him. We had, we had agreed, we hadn't signed any paperwork, but I believe that if I would have pressed it, they would have honored what we had agreed to do. You know, uh, but I didn't do that. You know, uh, I just wished them well and, you know, we, we stayed friends and, and, and so forth. So when I got out, Faye took me to Jimmy Iveen. Hmm. And um, I didn't ask Jimmy for anything because I didn't really know what I wanted. So I was just going to wait until I put my thing together. And then I was building this theater, too. I had a, I had a theater that held, like, it used to see, I think the theater said like 40 some hundred people. So I was going to have, like, the West Coast Apollo where everybody would want to be on my stage. My stage was a killer. Um, you could put my three or four cars on the stage. It was huge. Hmm. And it had the big ceilings and everything. I paid a million, two for it. Uh, so my plan was to use that as my platform, you know, to, 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 to launch my label off of that. But, uh, yeah, I was, I was going to put the label together. But before I could do anything, they had set me up already. Damn. So, okay, you go in and you come out. Like, how was, uh, what year was that when you came out? You're talking about 14 years. That's just. Well, I, I went back to prison in, in 94. Right. I got out from Tyler. I got out from Tyler County Jail, Smith County Jail, uh, 94. I think I got out the summer. I think I got out the summer. I was only out six months, like six months, maybe two weeks. But I'm saying, I'm saying when you got out this last time, like, because, I mean, the world had to change, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you got out this last time here. What'd you say about that? But the, how the world had to change, you know what I'm saying? When you got yeah, out it had changed, but I, yeah. was, I, was, I was studying. Hmm. Get yeah. ready. Yeah, I was studying. I read like 300 books when I was in jail. Huh. I ain't even I ain't even start exercising my game yet. The stuff that I studied in jail, I haven't even. It's just now. I'm just now getting in a position to where I can really start exercising. Like the stuff I've been doing, that's just that's nothing. Yeah. You know, uh, I got myself in a position now where I might be making two million dollars a month, huh. no matter where I'm at in the world. You know, I'm building. I'm building a grow right now. I'm building a forty-four uh, thousand square foot marijuana grow in California. Damn. A license, license grow, and uh, it's gonna hold six hundred and seventy-five lights. And I, I work. You know, I was just I was just in Forbes magazine for That's marijuana. It? Yeah, like three weeks ago. How does that feel to be like, man, the thing y'all like put me away for? Like now I'm getting praised for. Like it's crazy. It's crazy, but I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Full circle, you know what I mean? It's crazy, but uh, like I said, for me, it's it's been a marijuana's been a blessing to me. It's been uh, a source, you know, of, of income that uh, that I wouldn't know where to get it from no other way. You hmm. know, nobody, you know, nobody didn't reach their hand out. You know, I, like I thought they would have. I thought somebody would have said, "Man, this dude did all that." He, he he knows how to handle money. He don't steal, you know. He don't smoke. He don't drink. Ooh, I drunk last night. <laughs> 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 I did a little drinking last night, yeah. but uh, you know, for the most part, uh, I don't I don't really use money. You know, like uh, I don't care about clothes. You know, I don't buy clothes. Uh, I don't buy cars. You know, I own a car right now. Mm. I don't have a car. No shit. Nope. Um, I mean, I, 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 when I look at myself, I'm like, you can't lose with this guy. You know, uh, the only way you're going to lose is somebody steal it hmm. from him because he's not going to steal from himself. So I, I just got myself in a position. You know, I got, I got a call last night from some dudes. Some, some more marijuana guys and they want to partner up with me on a on a uh, 
a distraction, you know, where they take the weed and squeeze the oils and they make the wax and the shatters. And they also got to grow. Hmm. And they offered me 20% Man. for nothing, just for using my name and, and for me to be a part of it. Um, and for me to get the license. They want me to go through the license process as well. Um, and when I did the calculations, what they offer me is going to be about 600000 every two months. Come on, man. So the, the opportunities that, that the weed has has uh, offered me and, and made available to me is, is crazy. You know, um, and, and, you know, it's just, you know, I'm just biding my time, you know, waiting until uh, everything come to fruitation. But, uh, you know, I, I, I mean, I study the weed business. For, I've, been in, I've been in the weed business about eight years now. Um, and, and I did it just like I did cocaine. I studied it. Mm. You know, I, I analyze it. I, I sleep with it. You know, uh, I take it everywhere I go. And, you know, I'm always thinking about how to do a little better. Uh, I got two brands right now. I got two, mar two marijuana brands. That's in stores. I'm in about 20 stores. Hmm. Um, I got about three or four more brands that I'm doing with other people. You know, um, one of the things that I found out about business is it's better to partner with the people who know what they're doing. Yeah. And then you get their secrets. Yeah, yeah. So, like I was telling you about my grow that I'm doing, at the least we're going to be doing, say, 600 pounds. I mean, six, 675 lights. Each light a turn three, three and a half pounds of light. Mm. Um, but my partner, who was featured in the magazine with me, who, who well, he was featured in the magazine. He just put me in the magazine. I'm in his story. Uh, they say he's probably the most consistent grower for the past 20 years. I think that's what they said in the Forbes magazine article. Uh, and that's one of the reasons I partner with him, because his weed is really consistent. Uh, he also is the guy that that that, uh, that does the Marathon OG, too. Okay, already. For, for Nipsey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So he believes, he believes that in my building we're going to be doing like six pounds of light. So if we do six pounds of light... Um, we're talking about like <laughs> four or five million a month. <laughs> That's crazy. Big numbers. <laughs> yeah, the numbers is the numbers is crazy. But I, I have so so much opportunity, you know, that's be, because me being in the business the way I am, knowing everybody in the business, you know, I, I know people that are making hundred and ninety million dollars a year and hmm. uh another company that um that I'm that I'm talking to about a deal. Um, a company called Glasshouse. They just raised like six hundred million dollars, and they bought five million square feet of growth space. So uh, their numbers is going to be ginormous. And to be a part of that group, uh, what, what I've learned is when you're around the money, some falls off. You know, and you you be in there grabbing every ball. You know, you trying to get every ball. You're gonna pick up some of that. So the, the, the opportunities in, in the weed business has just been, been crazy. And that's going to parlay into every, uh, every other thing that I want to do, you know, like the boxing, you know. Um, uh, I'm starting to kill the boxing game right now. I got probably the best kid. Um, and that's his name, too, Kid Austin. <laughs> 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 I got the best kid probably. Uh, maybe some people saying ever put on boxing gloves. Hmm. That's what some people saying. Hey man. So uh, Kid Austin. Yeah. So you know boxing. Yeah. You know next is the music. You know uh, James Fonda Roy from fifteen hundred nothing. That's my boy. Hmm. You know. Uh, so so the music business is just waiting for me to, to make my mind up that I'm ready to make a move. Uh, but I was telling Mike that I really didn't want to do music again. I, I, you know, I done tried my hand in music since I've been home. We, we did a little stuff, but uh, I don't want to do it no more unless I'm fully funded. Hmm. You know, when I do my music this time, I want to be fully funded. I don't want to ask for no favors, you know. Uh, uh, 
I just want to go in and just, you know, do like Universal does. You know, yeah. pay everybody off, pay the record labels, pay the, the radio stations, and, and just, you know, let my artists or my artists are not. Uh, no corporates. You know, they're not, they're not going to be struggling. Yeah. You know, because when you're struggling, people people start to lose faith. Yeah. You know, they hit a bump. Oh, it's over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I, I don't want to go through that. When I do it this time, I, I want to have it where everything is taken care of and, and, and just smooth sailing. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's what it is, man. Well, man, you got anything else before we get up out of here, man? Oh, yeah, we're going to start shooting a movie in January. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're going to start shooting a movie. Um uh, Reginald Hutton and, and uh, Gino Taylor said they think the script is where they want it. You know, uh, we've been through like seven writers. Mm. <laughs> and, but that's why, you know, that's why I let them do the project because I wanted somebody that was going to be a perfectionist, you know, and Reginald Hutton. Uh, most, people, most people don't really know Reggie, but I think Reggie is probably the smartest black man in Hollywood. Mm. Or maybe the nah, smartest. he's been behind some, some, some stuff, man. Yeah, some stuff, maybe man. the smartest guy, period, uh, uh, in, 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 in my opinion. But definitely uh, the smartest black guy in Hollywood. And uh, to have him running the point on my project, you know, I'm, I'm excited about that. Uh, we plan on going around the country casting. You know, I want to go to at least like three or four states. Mm. You know, I saw how 50 did his casting, and I thought that was brilliant that he uh, went to a few different states. So I think I'm going to do the same thing with my casting, go to a few different states and do casting. You know, get some new people with opportunities. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we're doing that. Uh, what else I'm doing now? Working on another documentary. Uh, I'm doing a documentary where all my friends are going to be talking about me, you know, just whatever they had to say, you know, just times that we spent together or whatever. Uh, not just drugs either. I didn't want it to be about drugs, you know. Uh, some people, we knew each other in elementary school because I want to know what was I like in elementary school. Mm. You know, I don't forgot. <laughs> but, you know, some of my friends still have stories that they tell me about myself. So, so I'm working on that. Um, I guess that's about it right now. I guess that's about it. That's about all I'm doing that I, that I can think of. I'm doing some website stuff, too. Um, I'm still working on some website stuff. And uh, people can get my book. Go to my website, FreewayRickyRoss.com. You can get both my books, 21 Keys to Success. It's in stock right now. So get it because it sell out fast. Uh, my other book, um, The Untold Autobiography, I got plenty of those, but uh, 21 Keys is, is limited supply, so mm. y'all better get it while it's hot. Yeah, yeah. OG Money Mike, man, what you got for we get up out of here, man? Man, shoot. Vibing with all. <laughs> we, we, trying to, we trying to get this million dollars, these million dollars rolling. Yeah, Every yeah. Every day, you know. But now with the music, I'm just going. Mike, Mike cracking. Mike album right cracking now. already. I got the I got the album cracking. OG Money, Mike Legendary on all platforms. You know, I'ma just start the ball to pluck it off the mountain, let mm. it roll, and just snowball. See where. Then we gonna drop some money behind him. Mm. We're gonna drop some money behind him in a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah some real money on all yeah. sides, mm. <laughs> all sides of the game. You know, level the playing field. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I already. That's what it is, man. It's Danny Yusu podcast. Freeway Ricky Watts, OG Money Mike, man. Hey, man, we out of here. Peace.